follow us today to a 1994 American superhero comedy film called, The Mask. Be aware, there are spoilers. Now we see a man called Stanley Ipkiss, a bank employee, talking to another employee called Maggie. His workmate Charlie tells him that Peggy is taking advantage of him so he's going to take Stanley out on the town. Just then, it starts raining and a beautiful woman named Tina comes into the bank and Stanley and Charlie can't help but stare at her. Charlie takes her to Stanley's desk to talk about opening a new account. While Tina is flirting with Stanley, the hidden camera in her handbag is taking a video of the main vault. In an office elsewhere, we see the video being viewed by two men named Dorian and Freeze. It seems they are planning to rob the bank. Freeze tells Dorian that their boss called Nico will have to approve it but Dorian tells him things are going to change and he is going to take over the operations. Now Stanley enters a car workshop being run by two shonky mechanics. His car isn't ready so they lend him a car known as the Loner. That night Stanley arrives at the Coco Club in the Loner, an old beat up wreck. He meets Charlie with two girls outside the club. Charlie pays Bobby the bouncer to get in but Bobby doesn't let Stanley in. They throw him into the gutter. Just then Tina arrives and Stanley is embarrassed so he leaves in the Loner, leaving a trail of smoke. Now we see Stanley driving onto a bridge where the Loner breaks down. He walks to the side of the bridge and sees a body floating in the water so he runs down to help. He discovers that there's no body, it's only a pile of floating rubbish. But in that rubbish he finds a strange wooden looking mask. Stanley arrives home dripping wet and the landlady named Mrs. Peenman comes out and abuses him for wetting her rug. As he enters his apartment his dog Milo jumps up to greet him. He watches an interview with a Dr. Newman on TV, about people wearing masks metaphorically, to hide their true personality. Milo seems disturbed by the mask and Stanley picks it up to take a closer look. He puts it close to his face and suddenly it attaches itself to Stanley's face. As Stanley spins around the room like a tornado, Milo runs for cover. When Stanley stops spinning, he has been transformed into some strange character with a green face, the mask. He goes into the hallway near Mrs. Peeman's door and all hell breaks loose. An animated clock jumps out of his pocket and he proceeds to try and hit it with a huge mallet. Mrs. Peenman comes out, takes one look at him and screams, then she tries to shoot him. He bounces all the way down the hall and jumps through the window, falling to the road below. He's now completely flat. He peels himself off the road and a car honks its horn at him. He blasts his tiny horn back at the car which explodes the windscreen, then he walks off. A street gang tries to rob him but he runs down an alley with them chasing him. When they find him he's performing balloon tricks which fascinate them, until he turns one into a machine gun and starts shooting at them. He decides to visit the car workshop to take care of the two mechanics but we don't see what he's done to them, yet. The next morning sees Stanley waking up in his bed. He remembers last night's events then rushes to the mirror but decides it must have been a dream. Just then there's a knock at the door. It's a detective named Lieutenant Mitch Kellaway, inquiring about the disturbance last night. Stanley says he didn't hear a thing, but from the detective's description of what happened, Stanley now realizes that it was no dream. He looks at the clock and sees that he's going to be late for work. Before he leaves he throws the mask out the window but he doesn't see it fly back in as he leaves. At the car workshop, the two mechanics are being wheeled out to an ambulance with car exhaust pipes protruding from their rear ends. A woman reporter named Peggy sneaks in to have a look around. Stanley arrives at work and Charlie asks him where he went last night. The bank manager asks Stanley why he's late. Peggy the reporter comes in to ask Stanley a few questions about the car workshop incident. She tells him there are hundreds of women looking for a guy like him, an honest, decent guy. She gives him her card with her personal number on it then leaves. Dorian goes to see his boss Nico. It looks like Nico knows that Dorian plans to take over so he tells him to get out of town or he'll be taken care of next time. Now Stanley is asleep in his apartment and dreaming about Tina. In his dream, she is licking his ear but then he wakes up to find that it's actually Milo who's licking his ear. He looks at a newspaper clipping of Tina, singing at the Coco Club and gets an idea. He puts on the mask and once again, he's transformed into, the mask. He has no money but he has an idea where to get some. Dorian's gang are about to rob the bank when, the mask, breaks out of the bank's doors and like a whirlwind, he spins down the street with bags of money, leaving Dorian's gang empty-handed when the police arrive. At the Coco Club, a very long limousine pulls up and, the mask, gets out. He flicks money into the air then enters the club. Inside the club Tina comes out singing in a very attractive dress. The mask is going crazy as he watches her moving through the club. The mask spins his way up to the band and gets them pumping then dances with Tina, spinning her around, up and down. Dorian's gang arrives and tells him about someone who took all the money from the bank. One of the gang members named Sweet Eddie points to, the mask, and tells Dorian, that was the guy who took the money. Nico's thug named Orlando, shoots, the mask, or at least he thinks he did. The mask puts on a big dramatic act of dying. 
Dorian and Orlando try to shoot him as he bounces away. Just then, Lieutenant Kellaway arrives with a squad of police and arrests Dorian and Orlando. Lieutenant Kellaway finds a piece of Stanley's old pajamas on the floor. The next morning, Stanley is still asleep in bed wearing striped pajamas when Kellaway is knocking on the door. Stanley goes to the closet for some clothes but the bank money is in there and spills onto the floor. He eventually answers the door after stashing the money and Kellaway walks straight in asking Stanley about the bank robbery and the mask. Meanwhile, Milo is trying to open the closet. Later at the police station Kellaway and another cop called Doyle are watching the bank's security footage of the robbery. Now we see Dorian talking to a room full of thugs. He's offering $50,000 to anyone who can bring him the mask. Then he questions Tina about her kiss with the mask. He's jealous for sure. At the bank, Stanley enters as the police are doing their investigation. The manager comes up to Stanley and blasts him about arriving an hour late, but for once Stanley stands up to him and blasts him back. The manager slinks away. While Charlie is talking to Stanley, Tina walks in and Stanley takes her upstairs. She asks him about the mask. It seems she's infatuated with him. Stanley says he knows him and maybe he could arrange a meeting for her. She kisses his cheek and leaves. Stanley takes the mask to see a Dr. Newman, who tells him that it looks like the mythical mask of Loki, the Norse god of mischief. When Stanley tries to give him a demonstration of the mask, nothing happens. Dr. Newman thinks Stanley is a wacko. He tells Stanley that he and the mask are one in the same, just as so Stanley will leave his office. Stanley leaves and catches a taxi while Kellaway and Doyle have Stanley under surveillance. They watch him from behind some bushes while Stanley is in the park. Tina arrives and they sit on the park bench but Stanley feels awkward so he tells Tina that he'll go before the mask arrives. He runs behind some bushes and emerges from the other side as the mask. He tries to kiss her but she knees him in the crutch. It seems she's not so fond of him now. Just then Kellaway, Doyle and some cops come out and arrest the mask. In the newspaper office, Peggy's boss named Murray tells her the police caught Stanley. She says she really needs the story so he lets her go. Back in the park two police officers are searching the mask and finding all sorts of weird things, even a photo of Kellaway's wife. The mask does a quick one and switches the handcuffs to Kellaway and Doyle before he spins away to the park gates. He barricades the gates, only to find there's probably every cop in town pointing their guns at him. Suddenly, he's dressed in a flamenco costume and doing an exotic dance. Before you know it, all the cops start singing and dancing along with the beat. Kellaway and Doyle climb out of the park and break up the fun. The mask runs down an alley with the cops in pursuit. Stanley manages to remove the mask just as Peggy pulls up in her car and calls to him. He gets into her car and the cops shoot at the car as she speeds away. Now we see Stanley and Peggy sitting in the newspaper's warehouse talking. She tells him how much he means to her, but in fact it's a lie, because she has sold him out for $50,000 to Dorian who arrives with his thugs. They take him up to the printing machinery and hang him up till he tells Dorian how to use the mask. Dorian puts on the mask and transforms into a super criminal. Dorian's thugs take Stanley to his apartment to retrieve the bank money. Orlando and another thug collect all the money from the closet while Milo watches. Milo sees Stanley downstairs in the car and sneaks out the door. As they speed off, Milo follows the car. They drive past the police station and throw Stanley out onto Kellaway. Kellaway takes him inside and locks him up. Milo is out in the alley near Stanley's cell. Tina comes to the station to visit Stanley. She tells him that he's the one she really likes, not the mask. When she leaves, Dorian's thugs chase her and Stanley sees it. Dorian finds Tina in the alley and takes her in his car. Stanley gets Milo to jump up to the cell window. He sends Milo to retrieve the keys to the cell door and escapes, taking the officer's gun. Kellaway comes in and Stanley handcuffs himself to him and they leave the police station to find Tina. Now we see the Coco Bongo Club which is owned by Dorian's boss Nico. Mayor Tilton is there, along with other prominent city members to raise money for the War Orphans Fund. Charlie is also there enjoying himself. Dorian, wearing the mask, breaks down the doors with his gang and a gun battle ensues with Nico and his men. Nico shoots Dorian but the mask protects him and he shoots the bullets from his mouth, back at Nico, killing him. Outside, Stanley pulls up and leaves Kellaway handcuffed in the car with Milo, then he enters the club with a gun. He knocks out a thug and takes his gun, then finds Charlie and gives him the gun. He sees the masked Dorian tying Tina to an artificial coconut tree and setting explosives near her to go off in 10 minutes. Orlando catches Stanley and takes him to Dorian. In the car, Milo manages to unlock the door and heads for the club. While Orlando is holding Stanley, Tina has an idea. She asks Dorian for one last kiss, but not with the mask. She wants to kiss the old Dorian she was in love with, so he removes the mask and as he's kissing her, she gets one leg free and kicks the mask through the air. It flies across the room and everyone is trying to grab it but it's Milo who jumps up and gets the mask. 
Stanley tells Milo to run then he tries to untie Tina but Dorian starts fighting with Stanley. As Sweet Eddie grabs Milo's legs, Milo puts on the mask and becomes a ferocious little dog. Stanley knocks out Dorian then calls Milo. He removes the mask from Milo. Orlando shoots the mask and it flies behind a bar followed closely by Stanley. They shoot up the bar but, the mask, emerges from behind the bar and as they're getting ready to shoot again, the mask pulls out two handfuls of huge guns and rocket launchers. Orlando and the other two take off fast. Turns out, the mask's guns were only fake. Tina calls to, the mask, because the explosives are about to detonate. He is there in a flash and swallows the explosives which go off in his stomach. He belches some smoke and fire but he's okay. Now Dorian pulls out a knife but Milo barks to warn, the mask, who paints a toilet flush on the tree and as Dorian enters the pond, the mask, flushes him away. Stanley removes the mask but before he can kiss Tina, Charlie comes in with the police to arrest the thugs. Outside the club, Kellaway is about to arrest Stanley but he bumps into Mayor Tilton. He tells the mayor that Stanley is the mask, but the mayor tells him that it's Dorian, not Stanley, because he saw it with his own eyes. The mayor says that Stanley is a hero because he saved them all from Dorian and his men. Now we see Stanley, Tina, Charlie and Milo drive onto a bridge and Tina throws the mask back into the river then gives Stanley a passionate kiss. Charlie has ideas of his own. He dives into the river after the mask but Milo beats him to it and swims off with the mask. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.